regular homotopy is a continuous deformation from one regular curve to another, which satisfies certain conditions. Each intermediate curve must be regular. That is, a point and its tangent vector must both move continuously around the curve and return to their initial positions. Also, if we choose a particular point on the initial curve and follow it as the curve deforms, both the point and its tangent vector change continuously. The rotation number of a regular curve is the number of times the tangent vector rotates counterclockwise going once around the curve. This curve has rotation number two. In 1937, Whitney and Graustein proved this theorem relating regular homotopy to rotation number. In this film, we will prove half of this theorem. Two regular curves in the plane are regularly homotopic if they have the same rotation number. Here is an example. These two curves both have rotation number one. Here is a regular homotopy between them. Here is another. For this simple case, you might have found a regular homotopy by trial and error. But with two more complicated curves, this might be more difficult. In this film, we will give a proof by a general construction which will work for any two curves with the same rotation number. First, we can make each given curve have a standard length. It's not very difficult to verify that shrinking a curve is a deformation which satisfies the conditions for a regular homotopy. The same is true for magnifying. Then we can turn the curves so that the tangent vectors at the starting positions point to the right, since turning is also a regular homotopy. We have now standardized the two curves. Next, we will consider how the tangent vector behaves as it goes once around the curve. We can record its rotations on a tangent graph. The horizontal coordinate is distance along the curve, and the vertical coordinate is the amount of rotation of the tangent vector. When the tangent vector starts, we set the rotation to zero. When the tangent vector is pointing up, the tangent graph has reached a height of one quarter. Now the tangent vector points to the left, and the tangent graph has reached a height of one half. down corresponds to three quarters. When we return to the starting point, the tangent vector is again horizontal. The tangent graph has now reached one, the rotation number of the circle. The slope of the tangent graph is related to the curvature of the curve. When the curve makes a wide turn, the slope of the tangent graph is small. But during a tight turn, the slope is large. Here the final value is two, because the tangent vector has made two full rotations. Let's look at a figure eight. 
When the tangent vector turns counterclockwise, the tangent graph slopes upwards. When the tangent vector keeps a constant direction, the graph is horizontal. As the tangent vector turns clockwise, the tangent graph slopes downwards. The accumulated rotation becomes negative. Then it comes back to zero. Here is a final example. When the curve suddenly changes from a clockwise turn to a counterclockwise turn, the slope of the tangent graph suddenly changes, giving a corner in the graph. This does not violate our conditions for a regular curve, though, because the curve itself has no corners. The tangent graph specifies the direction of the tangent vector for each distance along the curve. If a point goes at constant speed and keeps moving in the direction of the changing tangent vector, it will reconstruct the curve. Starting with any tangent graph, we can construct a curve in this way. A jump in the graph would cause the tangent vector to change direction suddenly and make a corner in the curve. But if the tangent graph is continuous, the resulting curve will be smooth without corners. Now we can use the tangent graphs to construct a regular homotopy between two curves. Suppose we are given two curves with the same rotation number. Since we need a series of intermediate curves, we will use intermediate tangent graphs. For example, we can trace an intermediate graph whose height at each point is halfway between the beginning and final graphs. This new graph corresponds to a regular curve, which we can take as the one halfway between the two given curves. Similarly, for every fraction of the way from the beginning graph to the final one, we can trace an intermediate tangent graph. Since the two given graphs are continuous, each intermediate graph will be also. So each corresponds to a regular curve. We now have a whole series of tangent graphs corresponding to a series of regular curves. The value of the rotation for a fixed horizontal coordinate moves continuously up or down as the graphs change. This value determines the direction of the tangent vector at the corresponding fixed distance along the intermediate curve. The tangent vector therefore turns continuously during the deformation, and this condition for a regular homotopy is satisfied. We have used intermediate tangent graphs to construct intermediate curves. Now suppose we started with these two regular curves. The first has this tangent graph.
The second has a tangent graph with the zigzag reversed. The tangent graph halfway between them has a horizontal segment. Here is the corresponding curve. Remember that when the tangent graph is horizontal, the tangent vector has a constant direction. As we move from one graph to the other, the bumps in the curve are straightened out and a gap appears. This is not a regular homotopy. In the previous example, we did not get a gap because the curves had fourfold symmetry. But in general, we will. Can we fix the process by closing the gap? It turns out that the following method of squashing the curves works in almost all cases. First, the gap is measured by a segment. Then the point halfway along the curve is moved half this segment. The point one quarter of the way is moved one quarter as far, and so forth. Thus, we take a series of segments whose lengths increase with the distance around the curve. The path drawn by the ends of the segments is now a regular closed curve. We can do this to each of our intermediate curves. If the two given curves have the same rotation number, their tangent graphs end at the same integer. So every intermediate graph ends at an integer. Therefore, every intermediate unclosed curve will have a horizontal tangent both at its beginning point and its end point. During the squashing process, these two tangent vectors need not remain horizontal, but you can see that the squash affects them equally. So the squashed curves are regular. Let's summarize the modified construction of this regular homotopy. Given two curves with the same rotation number, we first make them the same length and turn them so their initial tangent vectors are horizontal. Then we draw the corresponding tangent graphs and the intermediate graphs between them. Each intermediate graph corresponds to a curve which might not be closed. We squash each of these intermediate curves to make a regular closed curve. Since the non-closed curves and the gaps determining the squash both change continuously during the deformation, the whole process will be continuous and is therefore a regular homotopy. The first and last tangent graphs will reconstruct our two given curves, which don't need squashing. Thus, we have constructed a regular homotopy between two given curves. But suppose we had started with these two figure eights.
Here are the intermediate graphs. And the intermediate curves. Here are the squashed curves. This curve got squashed to a point. This can only happen when the given curves have rotation number zero. Whitney's proof has an extra paragraph which shows how to change the homotopy in this case. Here are the intermediate curves. Here are the squashed curves. Apart from this exceptional case, we have proved the if half of the Whitney Graustein theorem. In the previous film, the only if half was proved. Thus, to see whether or not two curves in the plane are regularly homotopic, you need only look at a single integer, the rotation number.